there are three places you might reasonably expect to find a plane. The first and most obvious place is in the sky. The second is at an airport, either loading or unloading goods or passengers. The third is in a hangar, waiting for a new job to do. If they turn up anywhere else, it tends to be a surprise to see them. Just like old clothes, disused mobile phones, and broken down cars though, planes can become abandoned, and they can turn up in some unusual places when it happens. There's a field in the town of Temple in Texas that hosts a whole three abandoned warplanes, and hardly anybody knows they're there. The trees that line the field are thick and dense, and so if you were looking at it from the road, you'd have no idea that there was an old F-4 Phantom II fighter jet and two F-14 Tomcats rotting away behind all the greenery. The trees might shield the old planes from view, but they don't shield them from the weather. Time and the elements have damaged their tired old frames, and plants now grow through their broken bodywork. It's known that the trio of planes once belonged to the Grand Prairie Armed Forces Reserve Complex, which was based in nearby Dallas, but closed down in 1998. Several people think the complex simply dumped the planes after it was closed, although nobody's ever admitted that. A group of local amateur military historians are currently trying to salvage the planes and gain protection for them. Perhaps they could even be restored one day. From a plane graveyard in the United States of America, we're moving to a plane graveyard in the United Kingdom. This one can be found on Wasteland behind the Skylark Hotel in Southend, Essex, and is even more mysterious than the Texan site. There's a clue in the name of the street that the planes can be found on, which is Aviation Way. But the land behind the hotel has been undeveloped for decades, and nobody knows how or when the battered old planes arrived there. As with the Texan site, there are three planes here, and perhaps you could help us to identify one of them? The two large planes are both Hawker Siddeley HS 748s, an old type of airliner that was manufactured by Avro. The smaller plane is in such a poor state that we haven't been able to identify it. All these years standing in the open hasn't been kind to the steel birds. Without any surviving livery, it's impossible to say who owns them and the hotel says they've been there for as long as the hotel has been trading. Australian built and Australian flown, this Canberra first took to the skies in October of 1956 for test flights. It made the grade with flying colors and was formally handed over to the Royal Australian Air Force in April 1958, 18 months after it took its first flight. As was the case with many planes of its class, this plane saw action when Australia became involved in the war in Vietnam, where it served with the 2nd Squadron and took part in a variety of missions, managing to stay clear of harm and damage. Because it came home from war in one piece, it was reimagined for a new peacetime role. A hole was cut into the bomb doors, and the Canberra was fitted with highly specialized cartography equipment for survey missions. For the era, it would have been considered highly technologically advanced. We don't know what it did to deserve its current fate, but it's now mounted on poles outside a caravan park near Amberley. Its registration number is still visible painted onto its side, A84-238. When the subject of supersonic flight is mentioned, the first plane that most people think about is the French Concorde. But as great as the Concorde was, it wasn't the first passenger aircraft to achieve the feat. That honor goes to the Russian Tupolev Tu-144, which should be afforded pride of place in the history book. Instead, here we see a Tu-144 standing forgotten and unloved in the back streets of Kazan. This was once an active plane that carried thousands of passengers during its life. But after it was handed over to the Kazan Aviation Institute, after it was retired from service, they simply left it standing in their yard. Contrast this with the way that the French look after their Concorde aircraft in Les Bourget, where it's safe and protected inside a hangar. The poor Tu-144 has been left at the mercy of fate. There has been recent talk that it will be taken away to be restored and mounted as a museum piece. 
that day can't come soon enough. Kodinka Aerodrome stood in Moscow for a very long time. While it was still open, it was the oldest airfield in the whole city. Planes have been in this place since 1910 when the field was officially designated as an airfield by the Moscow Military District. During its peak years, it was the heart of all of Russian aviation, with the headquarters of Aerofloat, MiG, and Ilyushin located close by. All good things come to an end, though, and it closed for the last time in 2003, leaving a lot of fantastic old planes still standing. Unlike some of the other aircraft we've looked at, the planes in this graveyard are still in excellent condition, and there's a wide range. The Sukhoi Su-27 still looks ready to fly. The MiG-25PU Foxbat still wears its livery proudly. And the Yakovlev Yak-25 is a coat of paint away from coming back to life. The land will eventually be used for a housing development, and so one by one the planes will disappear. But as of right now, there are still between 20 and 30 of them on site. Identifying this F-111B interceptor parked at a boneyard in Mojave, California, wasn't easy work. First, you have to get a good enough picture of it to realize that the nose is shorter than its cousin, the F-111 Aardvark. Secondly, you have to find the tail number to make absolutely certain you have the right plane. Only seven of these ultra-rare fighters were ever built. The first five were destroyed during testing or scrapped because they were failures. One of them, with frame number 152715, has been confirmed as a permanent resident of a different boneyard at China Lake. That leaves only frame number 152714, which was used for missile trials in 1969 and then half scrapped and stripped in 1971. Only the Hulk remains, and by process of elimination, we know that these pictures are of that Hulk. It's a sad end for a very rare steel bird, and inconsistent with the respect they've been shown elsewhere in the world. When the Royal Australian Air Force retired its own complement of F-111s back in 2010, they chose to bury the planes instead of allowing them to be scrapped. The jungle wreck site of a Japanese Mitsubishi G4M1 bomber is a notorious one for those who know war history. It marked something of a turning point in the battle between the United States of America and Japan during the Second World War. The long cylindrical planes were known as Hamaki bombers to the Japanese, but Betty by Americans. One such bomber had Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto aboard as it was flying over the Solomon Islands on the 18th of April 1943. Yamamoto was a particularly important target for the Americans, as he was the man who had authorized and planned the Pearl Harbor attack. Unbeknown to the Japanese, the Americans had since broken their code. They decoded Yamamoto's travel plans and lay in wait for him. Two P-38 Lightnings met the Admiral's plane in the air and shot it down, sending it plummeting to ground in the jungle below. The pictures of the wreck were seen around the world and boosted the morale of Americans while simultaneously dealing a significant blow to the Japanese. Becoming a famous wreck is probably the least dignified way for a famous old aircraft to bow out, so by that barometer, if the Wan T trip had feelings, it would probably be ambivalent about its current status as a failed restaurant in South Korea. The jumbo jet was built in 1970 and at that time was the pride of the whole Pan Am fleet. It spent 29 years in the air and retired with a clean service history in 1999. That's when a pair of wealthy South Koreans bought it and decided it was the perfect vehicle for them to cut up and turn into a five-star eatery. All the signs suggest that the restaurant probably looked amazing when it was brand new, but there just weren't enough customers who wanted to eat five-star food in such a strange place. The restaurant failed a few short years after it started, and the plane has simply been left standing, with bits of kitchen and lounge still inside it where the flight chairs should be. To add insult to injury, half of one of its wings has been cut off. We've seen more than one graveyard of abandoned planes so far in this video, and we don't always know why they're there. 
We do know why this graveyard of abandoned helicopters exists in the Andalusia region of Spain, though. And it's not a pleasant story. There are downed helicopters all over the hillsides close to Nijar, and more come and join them each year, with an average of one new crash each four to five months. Some of them could probably be salvaged and repaired, and with average value of half a million dollars, you would think that someone might be tempted to do it. But nobody wants to touch them because they all belong to very wealthy drug dealers. The helicopters, like this Polish PZLW-3, fly under cover of darkness and at low altitudes in order to avoid detection. That makes the smuggling trip a difficult one and explains why one or two journeys every year end in disaster. You may have heard of Swamp Ghost before, but she's such a famous plane that there's no way we can do a video about abandoned planes without mentioning her. The Boeing B-17E Flying Fortress was shot down over Papua New Guinea during 1942, but her pilot managed to ditch her into a swamp and escape with his life. When he made it back to base, he couldn't pinpoint the location of his plane, and so she was considered lost. The first hint that someone might have found it came in 1972 when a helicopter pilot claimed to have spotted a wrecked American bomber from the sky and the finding was finally confirmed in 2006 when a recovery team flew over it again and took photos. The rescue team dragged it out of the water and took it to Le Wharf, but it wasn't until another four years later that they were finally given permission to export the plane back to the USA. After all these years in a swamp, the plane has now been successfully salvaged and partially restored. Quite rightly, she's been awarded pride of place at Pearl Harbor's Pacific Aviation Museum. Ditching into water is something that the Douglas SBD Dauntless has in common with Swamp Ghost. And both incidents happened during the Second World War, but the individual circumstances couldn't have been more different. Swamp Ghost went down during a battle. The Dauntless went down during a training accident falling out of the sky above her home country and landing in the freezing waters of Lake Michigan. That was back in 1944, and that's where it stayed until 2009. Investigators considered themselves lucky to have found it, because they believe there to be hundreds of planes at the bottom of the lake. When it came to the surface, Dauntless was in shockingly good condition. The crash must have been a very gentle one. Because if it wasn't, there's no way the wooden antenna would have survived the impact. It did though, and it's still in one piece, as are the wings, tail fin, and propeller. She's now undergoing careful restoration, and it's possible she might even fly again one day. This cute little L410 turbolet plane was brought to Siberia under false pretenses. Built in 1983, the plane is a little old, but it's still capable of flight, and it's in good condition for its age. When it turned up in Tomsk, local residents were naturally curious about what it was doing there and why it was parked on the corner of the street. They were told that a local business had bought it, and they were going to use it as the centerpiece of a new entertainment facility. The interior of the plane was to be fitted out with cutting-edge flight simulator equipment, and an education center would be built around it. The residents liked the sound of this, and so they sat back and waited, but nothing ever happened. Nobody has ever come back for the plane, and nobody started building anything. The whole thing has been a significant disappointment, especially for the plane, which could probably still handle taking people on small interstate flights. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.